Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and as always, thank you for joining me. This is Alan with another broadcast of the Morlog Morning Digest. You guys can help our channel grow by liking, subscribing, hitting the bell for notifications, but most importantly, please share the content. A donation can be made at paypal.me slash Digest if you're feeling generous. Don't feel any obligation, but it would certainly help me out. We're going to get right into the coronavirus update for the day. I'm going to touch on some statistics to start, but that's not where the main drive of this focus and the conversation is going to be. Now, we have 15 states inside of the United States with confirmed cases. We have over 130 confirmed cases inside of the United States. And on top of that, we now have 12 confirmed deaths. And if I had a guess at the time of me making this video, that number's actually increased. Now, what does all of this mean and what does all of this point to? Well, as I've said from the very beginning, this thing is not going to be able to be contained. And with that becoming more and more self-evident, there is going to be some tough decisions that not only us as individuals are going to have to make, there's going to be tough decisions that the governments of all of these countries are going to have to start to make. And I want to point to Holland and the Dutch government into a document that was leaked by them yesterday and what you can expect in the United States based on that document. The document that was released by the Dutch government clearly talks about mobilizing their armed services and using those armed services to go out into their citizenship and take their citizens, if they're showing any symptoms of this virus at all, and moving them to mass quarantine centers. They're talking about using military tents. They're talking about using gymnasiums, retirement homes, nursing homes, basically any public building that can be used as a quarantine area. Now, what does that mean? Well, this document was leaked. So that means that the governments all over the world right now behind closed doors are considering taking the same exact draconian actions that were taken in China. Now, in my opinion, this is all too late. You're not gonna be able to contain this anyway. But if the Dutch government is preparing to do such a thing, the United States most definitely is. And there's evidence to suggest that we're already moving in that direction. Our civil liberties are already being taken from us because of this coronavirus. And it is imperative for you to understand this because once a civil liberty is taken, trying to get it back afterwards is damn near impossible even if the civil liberty was taken for a very good reason okay now the task force that mike pence has set up just passed an order for nationwide that if you are suspected of having the coronavirus and a doctor tells you to get tested you are mandated to take that test and the government can forcibly make you take that test regardless of whether or not you want it. Now in my opinion, this isn't all bad. Yes, we want to know the cases that are taking place. But at the same at the same point, right, we have to realize that this is the beginning of a much bigger process as well as the first step in taking more and more of our civil liberties. Now there is no doubt that once this thing gets beyond the case, 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 cluster, cluster, boom, once it hits that boom stage and people are kept out of work and people are forced to stay home and people can't engage in economic activities, what other rights are gonna be taken from us? Now, another thing this task force did is take $3.3 billion that was just approved by Congress, right? And they're giving it to the CDC. Now, a vast amount of this money is gonna be used to further their efforts in developing a vaccine or an RNA-type treatment for this virus. 
Now, if that's the case, and they do end up making a vaccine, if they already have the precedent of being able to test people regardless of whether or not they want this test done, are they now going to extend that to telling every citizen, you have to get this vaccine? Right. Are you going to get that vaccine? Are you going to pay the price if you don't get that vaccine? What is the government going to do to you? And I'm telling you right now that this is a lot worse than what they're letting us know. And I'm going to point to something that just happened in Iran as a way to sink this into your guys' head. Let's just say for a second that you have a population of prisoners, right? And they're in jail or prison, right? And this virus comes through. And these guys are in there for committing some of the most atrocious crimes you can imagine. And I'm sure that there's murderers, rapists, everything you can imagine in there, right? What incentive do you have to furlough those people? That's what just happened in Iran. They're furloughing all of their prisoners right now because they don't want to deal with an epidemic inside of the prison system. If they can't handle their own prisons, how out of hand has it really gotten? And let's just say the numbers coming in from Iran right now do not correlate with them going to such extremes of furloughing their prisoners, okay? What happens inside of the United States? Are we gonna furlough our prisoners? Because let's face it, man, if this virus does break out inside of our correctional facilities, it's gonna be just like the Princess Diamond cruise ship. It's an incubation chamber and every single one of those people are going to get it. Now this is my personal opinion and I think this is the only way that this is going to get resolved. And that is herd immunization. I don't think there's any other alternative at this point and I think our governments have came to the same conclusion. Okay. The thing is, if we do try to contain this right and we quarantine a bunch of people and we prevent them from getting this disease. What's gonna end up happening in a year and a half when this thing comes back or six months when the next flu season starts and this thing is still here? If 60 to 80% of the population get this because you don't use quarantining, that 60 to 80% of the population build a natural immunity to it because they've already gotten it. And yes, with a 3.4 death rate, right, 3.4% death rate, yes, a lot of people are going to die, and that sucks. But at the same time, the loss of life will probably be greater if you do not allow this virus to spread naturally and allow that immunization to build up. Because what's going to happen is, is you're going to take away any chance of me building an immunity because I haven't been exposed to it, right? And then things go back to normal, and let's say this thing mutates into a more virulent, more deadly version of itself. Instead of me catching the virus that originally had a 3.5 death rate right now, where my chances of surviving are very good, right? If they quarantine us and only let a certain segment of the population get it, and then everything goes back to normal because the thing disappeared because the flu season ended, it has a chance of mutating into something deadlier. And then when it shows back up, it's going to burn through the population again, killing more people. And then if you quarantine at that time, a whole bunch of the population wasn't exposed to that version of it. And the cycle just keeps repeating itself over and over again. Whereas if you let this thing run its natural life cycle, yes, you lose 3% of the population that catches it. But at the same time, you're saving the rest of the world from having to deal with a more virulent mutation of it. And we've already seen that there is two different versions of this virus. There's an S-type and an L-type, okay? And what happened in China is, is they attacked, the, they, they targeted the version of this virus that was more deadly, right? And that right there, caused problems for them, okay? Because it allowed an asymptomatic type to spread, which meant, okay, the less deadly type is more asymptomatic, which means people don't even know they're sick, okay? 
And by targeting the one that's more deadly, you allowed that L-type to go unchecked and that is what evolved into the variant that we have in Iran right now and that's why we're seeing the, the higher death rates, etc, etc, etc. There's a lot of moving parts on this one and the more that we as humans try to interfere with this process, the more deadly we are allowing this virus to become over time. If we would have allowed this thing to spread worldwide from day one with no quarantine, yes, 60 to 80 percent of the population would have caught it, but they would have caught it quick, it wouldn't have mutated into a different disease, and we may very well see lower death rates than what we're going to see now because of what our governments are choosing to do. Just remember, your civil liberties and your safety are more important than getting an injection that was rushed to be able to produce. And then on top of that, if they're forcing you to get it, that right there should be the biggest red flag ever because you don't force somebody to get something that they actually need. God bless you guys and have a great day. I hope this was insightful and I'll talk to you guys soon.